Hello and welcome to week 10. This week we're going to be focusing on language and literacy development in pre-kindergarten. So we're going to be focusing on this particular age group. So for the agenda we only have three things on deck. Language and literacy development for, for preschoolers, video activity that you're going to be completing in the discussion board, and then going over the homework for this week. So we're going to start by looking at what are the key areas that we need to observe in pre-kindergartners language and literacy competencies. So when we're observing pre-kindergartners, uh, pre we want to focus on their oral, oral language. So what are their listening and speaking skills? Um, how are they communicating? Uh, we want to observe if they're able to use humor. So what are their first jokes like. Um, we're going to also look at their phonological awareness and we want to know the, about their oral language, their writing and spelling development, and their reading development and looking at how phonology is playing out in all of those three areas of their skill set development. Then we're also looking at book and text knowledge and we're looking at their metalinguistic knowledge. And when we're talking about metalinguistic knowledge, we're talking about the ability to consciously reflect on the nature of language. So they could be aware that language has a potential that's greater than just the simple symbols that compose language so that it goes beyond just the symbol to uh, convey meaning. We can uh, focus on the child's awareness that words are separable from their uh, reference, meaning that uh, the meaning resides in the mind of the speaker or of the writer, but not necessarily in the name of the word. Um, for example, um, Sonia is Sonia. And I and Sonia will be the same person, even if somebody else calls her a different name. Um, so the, the meaning is not in the name or in the word, but it's in the, the referent, the person, the object um, that is represented by that name. And we can also look at the awareness um, that the child might have that language has a structure that can be manipulated so that they, if they realize that language is malleable and they, they can change and write things in many different ways. Um, for example, if something is written in a grammatically incorrect way, it can be changed and modified to make it grammatically correct. Um, but that the structure uh, can be changed, but that the meaning can be preserved. That does not necessarily uh, change when we change the structure. So all of those sort of meta meta linguistic uh, awarenesses or knowledge we that children might have are things that you want to look at and see sort of where they're at with that um, knowledge base with those funds of knowledge. So when we're looking at emergent literacy behaviors, we want to observe certain things in our um, preschoolers. So we want to see how much aware they are of sound patterns and individual sounds within words. We want to see if they can associate sounds with letters of the alphabet, if they can make that connection that each letter of the alphabet might have at least one sound associated to it if they can focus on specific features of letters and uh, discriminating between the letters, if they can create narratives on their own, uh, invented stories, if they can develop um, a concept of book language. So if they know that the language that we find in texts and in, in textbooks and in, in books is different than the colloquial language that we use to converse or, or, or chat with a friend. Developing, uh, we want to observe if they 
are developing a concept of how to read, even though they don't, they or they can't uh, fluently read yet. Um, if they're developing a book related concepts um, in terms of what books are, what are they used for, what are the different parts of a book, and so on. And if they're developing a concept of how to write, again, even if they're not writing yet. Okay, so as pre-kindergartners develop literacy and language competencies, they might display these types of knowledge in their reading and writing and in their speech or their talk, right? So, and we've been talking about these five different knowledge bases all throughout the semester. So you're gonna see that we can observe them in their pragmatic knowledge, in their phonological knowledge, in their semantic knowledge, in their syntactic knowledge, and then in their morphemic knowledge. And all of these are going to be ones that we're gonna be observing for the children if we're working with preschoolers and we want to know how their uh, language and literacy development is progressing. So in the development of phonological knowledge, we will find that preschoolers, their, their knowledge of oral language focuses on understanding that spoken words can be separated into smaller units of sound. So they should be aware of this. Um, in terms of the written language, they can understand that they can separate sounds that then can be written. And if you put these sounds together, they can be written in a word so that the sounds can not only be pronounced, but that they can also be written. Um, evidence of phonological knowledge in reading is uh, sounding out. When, when you see that ch the child is trying to sound out the letters that they see to uh, convey a word and they're looking at the parts of a word, the onsets, the rhymes to um, to identify them and they might see patterns in words that have the same onsets or the same or the, or the same endings and then they rhyme and so on. Evidence of phonological knowledge in composition and writing development um, is complicated by the fact that uh, English language has 26 letters and about 44 phonemes. Um, and um, an example of this is uh, diagraphs uh, use two letters to represent one sound, right? So for example, um, PH and F or um, they're, they're two different compositions of letters and they both have, the, they both share the same sound. So this is, this is, you will see that children in this stage are beginning to learn this about the English language, that one letter can have more than one sound, that one letter or combination of letters can have the same sound, and how that um, plays out then in the way we speak, the way we write, and then the way we, we decode in order to read. So evidence of phonological knowledge in writing attempts, and these again are all fluid sta stages, meaning that children enter these stages sometimes more rapidly than others, or uh, stay in a particular stage for a longer period of time than others, and so on. So uh, pre- Phonemic spelling is characterized by the use of written letters that do not appear to have any relation to the specific sound associated with the letter. So there's, there's a random string of letters that are written by the child. So there's no association. And they can do this random string of letters and say, okay, it says cat. And they have 10 different letters and none of them are a C, an A, or a T, right? So that would be pre-phonemic uh, spelling. Phonemic spelling is characterized by the evidence that children are attempting to encode phonemes into their writing, right? So, um, which is which can be categorized as invented spelling or, or termed as invented spelling. So early phonemic spelling are instances in which only one or two sounds per word are represented. Then letter name spelling is when the letter name is used to represent a sound. 
So I just put the C for for cat or for c. Um, and then in letter and later stages of phonemic spelling, several sounds are represented in each word. So I maybe spell cat with a C and a T, and and that is that phonemic spelling. I can hear the C, I can hear the T, and that's what I write. Um, transitional spelling is characterized by words that, though spelled incorrectly, have a con conventional features and co consonants and vowels in them, and the patterns are correct. And then conventional spelling is when a child has developed a small writing vocabulary and con of conventionally spelled words and can write them um, accurately when they, when they write. So you'll see that the children will go through these um, fluid phases of phonological knowledge and phonolog phonological awareness, and you can see it in their spelling. Um, this table right here has some examples of uh, pre-phonemic, early phonemic, um, the transitional, the letter name, and all the, the different stages that I just um, talked about. You can have, you can see some examples here in this table. Okay, so what are some fluid stages of reading development in pre-kindergarten? So we'll see that children go from a beginning stage of reading pictures with oral-like language. So they'll see a picture and they'll, they'll, they'll talk about the picture. Um, the second stage then will be reading the pictures with a text-like language. So they'll see the picture and they will... Um, try to emulate the way that they hear, for example, their parents reading to them when they read a story. So they mimic the, the language that they hear in, in a text or in a book. Okay, and then the third stage is when they're reading text from memory. So they've memorized a book and children do this uh, frequently with the, their favorite books. They know them by heart, they know them by memory, they memorize the book and then um, they read it and they do the intonations and everything that the, that the adult that has been reading this book to them does. And so it sounds like they're reading, but really they've memorized the text. Um, so sometimes we're astonished to see a two or three year old read and the reality is they're not really reading as in decoding symbols, but they are uh, reciting from memory the text in the, in the book. So the, um, Fourth stage is reading what you know. So only words, say uh, high frequency words or words that the child can identify and that those are just the words that they know. So they'll read just, just those words, the words that they know. And then they begin to read by decoding and sounding out. And then the last stage is proficient reading when they can read sentences and paragraphs fluidly. Okay, so this video activity is our video, is our activity for the discussion board this week. And you're gonna watch this video of this uh, little girl and you're going to identify the stage, the reading stage in which she is by the behavior that you observe. And then, and explain why, why do you think she's in that stage? And then what can you say about her emergent literacy behaviors? What kinds of behaviors do you notice in her? that uh, give you clues of where she is with her emergent literacy development. That's gonna be our, our discussion board activity. Okay, so some fluid stages of writing um, development in, in preschoolers. So writing begins with drawing as a representation. So I'll do a, 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 an image, a picture, a drawing, and then that's gonna be my um, my com conveying of meaning is through through an image, right? Then I'll start scribble writing, and the scribble writing starts looking like writing in terms of directionality, um, but it's still there's no recognizable words there or letters. Um, the third stage is the mock letters, in which some letters are start some or some symbols or scribbles are starting to look like letters. And then the fourth stage is when you can write your own name, you can write random strings of letters that are identifiable to the adult. And the last stage is just is invented spelling. Um, well, actually the last, last stage is just conventional spelling. 
but the the stage before that is invented spelling where the child you can see is trying to um convey a, a meaning through a word but it doesn't have all the letters of that particular word okay so i'm going to show you some images and i want you to think about what stage do you think this is so if you were presented with this production by this child and you have the age there so you sort of can gauge but what stage do you think this child is at Okay, so if you guessed the scribble writing, you were correct. This is an example of what scribble writing would look like. Okay, let's see the next one. What stage would you say this child is in? So if you said drawing as a representation, you'd be correct. You see here, there's no scribbles, there's no... Um, written or print like production it's just you know it's lines it might want to represent uh, a jungle or a tree or a cat it's not necessarily um something that can be identified as writing or that looks even like how writing might appear okay how about this one what stage would you say this child is in you can see that um that the image to the left has some key words or key letters that read together might represent a word and this one this image to the left uh, to the right i'm sorry with with under the drawing right here you can see that there's some words that are complete it was, I ate, right? But there are some that are not. So if you said invented spelling, you are correct. That's where, that's the stage that this child is at. How about this one? What stage would you see this child is at in terms of writing? Okay, so if you said writing own name, and random strings of letters, you would be correct. Okay, and the last one, where would you say this child is at in terms of language uh, writing stage? So this child is at mock letters, because you can see we can identify some, let, some symbols that look like letters, others that look like they're almost maybe a letter on its side, right? So um, th this would be mock letters stage. Okay, so what can teachers do in order to help support and promote um, this literacy development for children? So one, you can honor children's writing and drawing attempts and say things like, yes, yeah, some people write like that and encourage them to continue writing and continue drawing. As, as they do so, they'll progressively get better at it, right? So the second thing you can do is you can provide multiple opportunities for children to write in both structured and unstructured ways. So you can have props for journal writing, for example. Um, you can have interactive kinds of writing where you write something and the child responds and then you respond to the child and so on. But you can also have free writing in centers, like open-ended writings with no particular purpose for the child to just explore the joy of writing. Um, the third thing that you can do is you can create a, liter a literate, rich classroom environment. Um, you can have something like three read-alouds a, a day. And we're talking about preschoolers, right? So three read-alouds a day, a morning message, an ABC wall, a sign-in, daily, chart um a writing and reading materials in all the centers you can have you know a plethora of things in your classroom that are going to help the child um have a very rich experience with uh literacy you can write for a purpose with children like if you're writing a memo uh, to your 
a principal in your school or you're writing a letter to a parent, you can involve the children in that writing. So they see that writing has a purpose. We do it because it allows us to convey meaning to others. Um, you can do interactive writing um, and do a morning message that help children uh, with writing and with deciphering writing. You can do uh, letter sorts with magnetic alphabetic letters. You can provide children with name puzzles for them to complete. You can make books or booklets with children and involve involve them in that book making process. Um, these are some examples, the daily sign in where children come in and they sign in their name. Um, this is an interactively written morning message where the teacher writes a message and the children come in and um, circle the capital in the lowercase b. That might be the letter that they're working with that day or that week. and. It, it, it involves them in writing and involves them with the morning message that they have for that day. Um, letter sorts writing with magnetic letters is another way to help children sort of see and feel because these are three-dimensional, uh, uh, feel the, the, the letters, the shape of the letters. Uh, culturally appropriate ABC walls with environmental print and children's names or in any any words that fall under each of the letters of the ABC wall. Those are all examples of things that you can have in your class. And this is all prior to spelling development, right? So this is all before you can start, okay, how is the appropriate spelling of a word and how do we, how do children navigate that kind of development? So spelling development, we're going to see that for spelling, we also have these fluid stages of spelling, right? And in this image here, you have two different authors that give you um, five different stages or that name the stages differently, but in essence, they're the same. Um, so the first stage is early or emergent spelling. And we're going to see some examples of that in, in written work that the children have produced. Then we have the letter name or alphabetic spelling of when they have the early letter name. Um, and this one can have an early letter name alphabetic spelling, a middle letter name alphabetic spelling, and a late later name letter name alphabetic spelling. But in essence, the stage is this letter name alphabetic spelling spelling as a whole. Um, then you're, we're going to see word pattern spelling, then we're going to be syllables and affix spellings, and then uh, derivational or relational spelling. And these are from Bear et al. Um, 2012. Those are the stages that we're sort of looking at. Um, but uh, Gentry 1982 also has uh, stages or names for these stages that are a little bit different than names, but the stages and what you expect to see from the child are in essence the same thing. Okay, so early emergent um, or emergent um, pre-communicative, depending on the author that you see, looks a little bit like this, right? So you can see that um, there's some recognizable letters like F and E and Q and L, and then some that look more like a humanoid figure here, right? So there's a mix there between image and uh, recognizable letters. In the early letter name or the letter name alphabetic stage, we're going to start seeing very recognizable um, letters and you can start seeing invented spelling in um, some of those letters. More so um, you're going to see that in the middle one. So this is the early letter name alphabetic stage but in the middle one you can start seeing the invented spelling and the separation between words for, um, for the children. And the late letter name alphabetic stage, you can see that there are a little more um, written uh, rules incorporated like capitalization, punctuation. Um, so it, you can see that it's a little more advanced than the one we saw prior. 
this one there is a little bit of a, a a glitch with the image right here but this part was just the drawing and you can see with inward pattern spelling or transitional stage um, depending on the author um, in which you can see that there is some still some invented spelling going on and the capitalization might not be the best but the sentence is longer than the one that we saw prior okay then you have the syllables and affixes spelling and you can start seeing that this is much more advanced um, that the child is using prefixes and suffixes with words is writing uh, longer sentences uh, beginning to write paragraphs and this is not something you're going to see with preschoolers but we're going through all the stages here and then the last stage is that uh, durational relations spelling which is conventional spelling where the child this child even writes in cursive um, is is spelling correctly every word is using contractions is using capitalizations punctuations prefix suffix even symbols when they're talking about numbers um, and it's it's very conventional at this point so what can teachers do Teachers can participate in writing workshops uh, for their children, set them, set them up for their students, have a word wall with uh, words that are uh, high frequency words that children were going to be writing a lot, but also words that are a little more complex that they're, that they're introducing into their vocabulary. Have them write their own books, have them um, wor study words with children in small groups. Uh, use words and letter sorts kind of activities and games, provide multiple opportunities to write throughout the day, read aloud to the children because the more we read, the more we expand and develop our writing skills. Um, and then connect reading and writing and drawing together in the activities that um, we do. Okay, so in addition, Pre-kindergartners are going to develop uh, semantic knowledge. We talked about the programmatic knowledge before. They're going to develop semantic knowledge. And children, in their semantic knowledge, they're naming things um, that they are learning about through their receptive language. They're defining words. Uh, the definitions are becoming closer to what socially shared definitions or accurately acceptable definitions rather than based only on their own experience. Um, but they're still not as in-depth as an adult or a dictionary definition, right? Um, they're using figurative language. They're using uh, concrete and abstract comparisons to help with new meanings, um, similes, metaphors, and expressive kind of language. They're using humor to tell jokes um, that often depend on the semantic understanding um, that words have multiple meanings or the play on words uh, kinds of jokes. Um, uh, this is, uh, I was gonna show you a video of a knock knock joke and I might show it to you. Uh, I'll incorporate it in, in the Blackboard uh, under week section under week 10 so you can you can see it um what can teachers do in context reading writing and talk uh provide resources and materials a lot of resources and materials for children to write and to talk into like for example tape recorders to 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 record their voices and listen back to it use text to build on semantic knowledge and ask questions make books provide booklets and center play areas for children to make books with with these materials okay for syntactic knowledge what are children okay so for syntactic knowledge children's pronoun usage progresses from um, subjects, I, you, he, she, they, to objects, me, him, her, them, to possessives, mine, his, hers, theirs, to then reflexive uh, pronouns like myself, himself, herself, themselves. You, and you'll see that progression. 
Um, the verbal phrase uh, expansion is also occurring around this in the pre-K stage. Um, and they they're using adverbs like likely, expressively, and auxiliary verbs like have, do, will, was, could. And, um, and you'll see this also, this expansion of this verb phrase usage. Um, they're also starting to use passive sentence. So these are used when they don't know the agent or the subject um, or don't want to focus on the agent or subject of the action. For example, the dog ate the cake. Um, they could say the cake was eaten by the dog, right? So they're focusing on the cake and not the dog, <laughs> not to the, the culprit here. So what can teachers do? Model syntactic language in context uh, of play and talk. Okay, for morphemic knowledge, uh, the children are changing verb tenses by adding morphemes. So the smallest meaningful part of a word is a morpheme, and they're changing the verb's tenses by doing that. So going from present to past by adding ed, for example. Um, comparatives and superlatives are starting to be used so they can understand the use of er or est as uh, more or most in, in words. Um, they have they're starting to use suffix like er to turn a verb into a noun um, and to demonstrate creative use of different kinds of words. Um, what can teachers do? They can model adding morphemes in context of play and talk and they can also do direct instruction of this and say okay when we do this when we add these letters here this is what it means. This is what how it affects the word and then how the meaning changes because of those letters that we added to the beginning or to the end of a word. Okay, um, when we're trying to develop this pragmatic knowledge for children, and I know we talked about pragmatic knowledge a little bit before, but sort of to wrap this up, these five uh, areas of, of knowledge of language, um, we can help the children tell their stories and dictate their stories to us. And here I'm going to uh, link a video of Vivian Gusson Paley, who was an early childhood educator from Chicago. She worked at the lab school in the University of Chicago for many, many years and has written many books from a teacher's perspective in which she centered her curriculum around the uh, dictating of stories. And so the children would create these very inventive fantasy stories and they would dictate them to her because she taught pre-K and K. So the children weren't um, writers yet. And so the children would dictate it to her. She would write it down. So she would model writing for them. And then she would help read it back to them and they would enact these stories that they would come up with. So it was a whole this whole storytelling and uh, sort of play-based scenario that was happening and that's how her curriculum was designed. Was That was anchoring her curriculum and how children were learning to read and write. So I'll, I'll link the video so that you can see sort of her in action taking dictation from children and how they all sort of uh, chimed in and, and participated. Um, so you can, children are beginning to be aware of, of genre and they're um, beginning to be aware that conversations, oral conversations can be written and those written productions can be have conventions. There are certain conventions that we follow um, in order to uh, right. Uh, what can teachers do? They can provide varied contexts for oral language to be uh, produced by children. They can increase conversational skills through authentic conversations uh, during reading, writing, and play. They can make books with the children and they can do um, the style of curriculum that Vivian Gus and Paley 
uh, did. She unfortunately passed away last year, um, so she's not no longer alive. But her legacy has taught us an immense and very uh, valuable um, a way to help children develop um, their literacy skills. So don't forget to watch that that video that I'm gonna uh, link under week ten. Okay, so lastly, the importance of play and language and literacy development. So we talked about Vivian Gusson Paley and how her curriculum revolved around this fantasy writing and then um, putting on these play scenarios um, in her classroom. So I thought this was interesting because this is a um, research-based finding that highlights the importance of play in uh, vocabulary development. So guided play is a model setting for language learning. And that's important to keep in mind, right? So when children are playing and when you're interacting with them as a guide and are facilitating guided play, that is a model setting, a, a model situation, an ideal situation for language learning. So, for example, infusing vocabulary instruction in guided play fosters word learning for preschoolers, especially those from disadvantaged backgrounds. So this is, this is something that they found in research. So one particular study tested the effectiveness of word learning through guided play against a more teacher-directed learning activity. So you had a guided play, activity in which children were learning words and then you had a teacher directed direct instruction kind of learning activity in which children were learning the same words. So all children participated in a shared book reading and then reviewed half of the vocabulary words through guided play and the other half through a picture card word recall kind of activity. After the play-based word of learning, children defined the target words more readily than they did after the picture card word learning. So what they gathered from this research is that children were able to recall or remember the words that were explained and their definitions through the play-based word learning activity more so than they did through the direct instruction picture card based learning activity. So this shows and, and research like this, there's, there's several, this is not the only one, but this is just an example, but this shows how play um, is, first it shows the importance of play in, in learning and in development particularly of literacy, but it also shows how play can facilitate learning for children in a way that is one, um, much more fun to engage in, but two, it's much more developmentally appropriate and the outcomes that we get are better in terms of what we're just focused on outcomes and how much the children are learning, the outcomes are gonna be better if we teach them through guided play than if we teach them through direct instruction. Okay, so that is it for this week. The homework is for you to complete admin slip number seven, which is based on Otto's chapter six, the reading for this week, then observation number five of your focal child, and uh, complete the discussion board activity, which is a video in which you're gonna try to identify the stage of reading of that particular um, child that you're observing. And then if you haven't done so already last week, complete your literacy assessments so that you have that ready for your upcoming uh, language and literacy profile assignment, which is due in a couple weeks. So that is it. I will see you again or talk to you again next week.